or four or five as we allow people to saunter in. Please come, come to the front. And very good afternoon to all of you. It's my pleasure to introduce Vani Murthy, whom we must, with a standing round of applause, welcome to this mandara. <laughs> Kindly stand up and applaud. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let me just read a little preamble that uh, we have put on Vani Murthy. Vani Murthy, through her constant efforts, has made her name synonymous with solid waste management and urban farming. As founding member of the Solid Waste Management Roundtable and We Care for Malayshuram, incidentally an area I come from where I was raised, she has raised awareness on effective waste management. She, as a direct result, thousands of households now segregate waste at source, ensuring renewable material does not end up being dumped in waste landfills. Apparently, her work will ultimately lead to a consumption where some of this waste can be managed at the ward level itself. It doesn't have to leave the ward. That's what I uh, learned in our conversations. Vani's apartment was even recognized with an award for their effective waste management techniques. Vani has also amassed a diverse experience in the art of composting. Her terrace garden is a perfect place. She tries various methods and even grows her own vegetables with the compost created. And she says the best way to find out where she lives in Malayshuram, in the very road that I live, is to say the greenest building around there, apparently. So that's... True, I have walked past it several times. Commercial vendors have sought her support in certifying their composting products, and she has trained BBMP officials in the art of composting. For her efforts, she has been featured in Satya Meva Jayate. I'm sure many of you have seen and uh, known that show, perhaps even seen uh, Vani Murthy in it. She has hosted a TEDx talk and won multiple awards. So it gives us all great pleasure, and before I even start the event, a round of applause to Vishal for for seeing her to come and share her experience. Over to you, Vani. She's already wired up. Thank you so much. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to, uh, you know, groups of people. And any platform that I get, uh, I just love to come. Uh, I hesitate very little when I'm called to come and give a talk. I usually do uh, a demo talk where I like to show people uh, you know, by it, it has to have a visual uh, impact. So that's what I do. But I'm running a PowerPoint today, nevertheless. And uh, uh, it's, it's a great pleasure. Uh, always look forward to, you know, make sure that I meet more people so that I can talk about my journey and what they can do in their lives to make a difference. We are looking at small things that, that can shift and make that difference. And each of us are capable of making huge difference to this planet. Uh, that's one, uh, one thing that I have realized in my journey. So it was uh, not a long time ago. I, I have been a homemaker uh, in the sense never left my home. Uh, I was just uh, sharing uh, how I used to be uh, before uh, this happened to me, before waste happened to me. Uh, so I never left home alone, never worked in any uh, outside home. It was family, joint family, kids, and that's the life I was leading. And uh, somewhere, uh, you know, uh, it so happened that I was introduced to a resident welfare association, and I thought, let me see what life looks outside my home. And I, you know, uh, uh, just gathered my wits and tried to uh, explore, uh, you know, at least get to know what people are doing. And uh, I found uh, amazing work being done at the RWA level. And uh, that's where I was introduced by Dr. Meenakshi, who was in the center, uh, about uh, you know, waste. And she w we did uh, an amazing project, project in our ward uh, well before I entered wa waste, you know, before I entered the uh, scenario of waste. Uh, we uh, changed uh, you know, the uh, electoral role in our ward, Ward 65. Uh, in one booth, we, we just had to, the enumeration was so bad there were people uh, who don't, didn't live, people who were dead in the electoral rolls. And uh, Dr. Meena, she said, will you partner with me and we will go meet the election commissioner and then check out if we could do something. And uh, it was such an exciting uh, project for me because I, I can't even imagine going, knocking doors and talking to new people. You know, that has never happened in my life. And uh, this was one opportunity where I looked at uh, understanding how the roles got made 
why there was so much of uh, you know uh, mess in the role. So we worked very closely with the BBMP to make sure that we uh, completely uh, did a new role altogether, and the Elections Commission approved of it. And uh, because my name was in the electoral role, but my uh, election card had my address in some other apartment, not in my apartment. So it was so badly done. So we completely cleaned up the electoral roll in one booth. And uh, when the elections took place, uh, it changed uh, the uh, you know, number of uh, people who actually came to vote. The city average was 45, but our booth had 65% voter turnout because the roll was much cleaner. And uh, actually, whoever existed in that ward were there, a part of it. So that's how we started. And then next came uh, waste management. She said, let's go and you know, uh, try to. There was a wow project. And I got involved in that. That's wealth out of waste. One uh, sentence shifted the way I looked at waste. She said, the ITC came in and they said they are importing huge container loads of waste from outside, spending you know, foreign exchange and uh, to pick paper. So because paper, to make paper, it was a paper board. Uh, they, to make paper, they needed you know, to recycle paper too, not just get virgin wood and you know, make paper. So they, they said if the community started to collect every bit of paper, it will be great to recycle. Because in India, we never ever throw newspapers or magazines. We always collect and sell it. But what was getting lost in our garbage was bits of paper. Every bit of paper is valuable. And he said, if you, uh, you know, recycle one ton of paper, you're saving 17 trees. And this stuck. And we, say, I, we said, this is so easy to do. You know, Get the community to start collecting. So we had this campaign, wow, where we went across. That's Sandhya Narayan, again, another huge champion in Bangalore. Uh, working with waste. And then that's my building outside, as he told, it's completely green. And uh, the girls in my building, the young girls, they were 11 and 12. Uh, we started a campaigning in my apartment to get everybody to start recycling. So start collecting every bit of paper. They became so famous. That's Vasanti Hari Prakash from NDTV. We used to have this uh, road show outside my building. They used to put up posters, slogans, and all that, and made it very vibrant. And we would talk to everybody who went past. We would roll out all our recycling bins. We would uh, uh, you know, show how the wet waste became compost. People had not seen compost before. So they would ask you how you did it. So we would explain. So it was a very fun activity for us for a very long time till they grew up and left homes for college. So, And the second thing, that was the first thing that shifted you know, a lot of things in my life. The second thing is visit to Velour. Velour is a place where we met uh, Velour Srinivasan. Uh, he was the man uh, who, who looked at waste. There was nothing called waste in his directory, in his, I mean, sorry, dictionary. Nothing as waste. So it was, uh, so we wanted to see what kind of models he set up. And that was an eye opener for us. And we were, you know, after visiting, we wanted to set up such models in Bangalore to showcase that you can have a zero waste campus, you can have a zero waste college, you can have a zero waste ward. So that was the dream in 2009 that we you know, started uh, uh, you know, looking at. Uh, this was 2010. And uh, nine is where our team came together. Uh, after this, uh, you know, we became a bonded team. We had a lot of champions from all over Bangalore who came together for one uh, presentation by Velo Srinivasan. And that's where we looked at meeting often so that you know, we can plan something. We can start campaigns around it. So this was the second uh, thing that changed. And the third thing is actually visiting the landfill. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it changes the way you look at waste completely. Because the three things that we value the most in, on this planet is your air, water, and the soil to grow your food. These three things are available for us on this planet and no other planet. And all these three things get contaminated and polluted at a landfill. Landfill is not scientific. It's just a dump yard. So it, it is mountains of waste, even before you reach the landfill. You have the stench coming, and you can see these mountains of waste, you know. Uh, and you'll wonder if it is a mountain or it's just waste. And uh, they just keep compacting and keep dumping. It's a dumping yard. And uh, the, when, when organic waste starts to break down in anaerobic conditions, because when you dump and compact, the whole thing is breaking down anaerobically. Something called the methane, the gas called methane, gets into the air. And this gas is 20 times more toxic than you know, carbon dioxide. That's one thing that we saw, that there's a lot of air pollution. The second thing is there's something called the lichate that runs off these landfills. You know? And this is dark fluid, which is uh, highly toxic. And this lichate 
enters the soil in and around the uh, landfill and also enters your groundwater. And there are farmers, there are villages there, farmers, this is just outskirts of Bangalore. You all must have heard of Ma Mawalipura and Mandor. And, uh, and villages are actually growing our food. So our food, most of our vegetables come from the outskirts. They bring it from the outskirts. And these are the vegetables that are grown in this. And you can very well imagine what kind of toxic you know, vegetables that you would be getting if people are growing with that water and that kind of soil there. It's highly contaminated. And uh, what we are throwing out somewhere is coming back to us in some form or the other, either on your plate or in your water, whatever. So we realized that we really, after this visit, you know, I swore, I swore to myself that I will not, you know, uh, uh, contribute to this mess. It is a mess, and I will not contribute. So when we came back, we, we needed to learn how we can, you know, actually manage our waste. So we started looking at segregating them. Uh, the first phase, we said we'll first start to get people to recycle all their dry waste, let them recognize what is recyclable and what is non-recyclable. And then the second phase, we'll get people to start composting. By then, my composting journey had started. I started understanding. I failed miserably when I first composted. But what really started me to continue composting and not give up was because I swore to myself that I will not send my waste there. That was the only reason that I had to continue and I, I had to learn. And when, when uh, uh, you know, I'm not an expert, uh, I am only with experience that I have gained by my experiments, that's it. And uh, we started segregating as a good good uh, you know habit and uh, for me it was very important for me and all my friends that how is garbage you know generated it's most of it is uh, you know uh, what we are using at home and many of it today the life lifestyle change that we are having disposable more the single use what we use once and we throw away has become a big component in our garbage so the first uh, thing that we need to understand is we need to reduce that so, by, so I have this habit of carrying my own things wherever I go. My bag always has a plate, a straw, a steel straw, so that I can refuse anything that is single use. So that had become a kind of practice. And wherever I go, I have my water so that I say no to a bo bottled water. I have a bag where, which I open out to buy my groceries. So it, it is uh, a, a strong, like we, it was, we were on a war against single use disposables because that becomes a big part of your garbage. And these are sm small things that you can infuse. I, I will say no to a, uh, even a paper napkin. I would carry, I carry my own little uh, you know, cloth napkin so that I, I don't have to use. So these, these things became a part of my life. And wherever I go, I, I do this. And uh, the second thing is 60% of what we generate as waste is, is your, from your kitchen. It's all biodegradable de degradable waste, which can be co converted into compost. And compost is this amazing. Uh, a thing that can be put into soil to make the soil a living soil. It's extremely important that we grow our food in a living soil, not a soil that has fertilizers and chemicals and, you know, using a lot of pesticides. So this is something that I learned. Uh, as I told you, I failed miserably, but what really got me going was the excitement of wanting to compost because I knew that 60% of uh, waste I don't have to discharge outside my home. I can do it within my home. So that, that became an amazing journey. And in this journey, uh, I experimented with uh, different kinds of composting. Once I got the composting, I mean, I got the black gold in my hand, it is like an addiction, you know. It can give you high better than any other high. And this really drove me to uh, experiment with different kinds of composting because we are in the urban scenario. In the rural, it happens naturally. Nobody has waste there. It, it goes into your backyard or the cows eat up your, you know, vegetable peels. So it, it, you're nothing, you're not discharging anything or burdening your municipality or burdening the landfill. But in an in a, in a, in a urban scenario like ours, we definitely need to understand that that 60% need not be discharged because that's the one which is contaminating uh, when it leaves your home. It, if it gets mixed up and it gets dumped. So uh, looking at, uh, you know, this is pots and pots of gold that I was creating. For me, it's more valuable than the metal gold because I, I can grow my vegetables in it. Uh, and you can see that in Bangalore, you can grow anything and everything. And uh, uh, this, uh, I, I met Dr. Vishwanath. Uh, it, it, this is another big thing in my life that shifted. Uh, he he uh, saw my posts on composting, and he's a pioneer in terrace gardener. Till then, I had no idea. I always thought there's something called the green thumb, 
and uh, I don't have one because I can kill plants because I don't know how to take care of them. Uh, but then when uh, he met me and he told me I would want you to come and you know, talk about composting to the urban farmers. So I said, what urban farmers? He said, yes, these are urban farmers. They grow vegetables on their terraces. They are the terrace gardeners. And uh, I went to one of their meets and uh, you know, my life changed again because I saw this young crowd. They were all in the IT and they were so excited about growing their own vegetables. They were exchanging saplings, exchanging seeds, and you know it was such a vibrant kind of environment there. I I, uh, I was like you know so happy to talk to them about composting because Dr. Vishnath said if they don't compost, they shouldn't be buying compost. They should be making their own compost. So you train them how to compost. So this this is where I got introduced and what I shared my experience. What I got is you know some seeds. I actually exchange earthworms for some seeds and some saplings and that's the first you know garden that i i sowed in my terrace and there's no looking back uh, it's again you know you started growing all kinds of vegetables you are so excited about getting a new new seed somebody has saved and you know they have you know uh, they want to encourage you and in bangalore the weather is so beautiful that you can grow anything and everything and i started growing all kinds of stuff uh, you can see uh, they were fresh they were organic because i had this healthy soil because i was making pots potfuls of compost, I was putting them into the soil and the soil was so healthy that everything grew so beautifully and uh, I didn't have to do anything other than just connect to nature. I didn't have to put any effort uh, to become an urban farmer and I can proudly say I'm an urban farmer today. Uh, and that's uh, something so uh, you can see, uh, you know, it's, it's a healthy meal that I eat because there is no uh, poison on this plate. Uh, I have stopped buying uh, food from grains and you know vegetables from the markets because most of the food that is grown is chemically you know grown. So I source uh, all my grains, my vegetables, my fruits from farmers who are still believe in natural farming methods, who don't put poison in on their land. So I am a part of a CSA that is the Customer Assisted Agriculture, Supported Agriculture, Customer Supported Agriculture, and I get my weekly basket of my. You know, uh, for the week, whatever I want, I order online, and that gets delivered. Delivered, and so today I eat healthy. Uh, I look at you know sustainable uh, uh, farmers, people who can. We we actually subscribe to them, so these these farmers stay alive. Uh, you know, uh, uh, believing in their traditional practices, and these are the farmers who who grow local, who grow regional, and who grow uh, you know uh, seasonal. So you you look at. I do, I'm not looking at lettuce and you know, kind of broccoli to, for them to grow. Whatever they grow is what I want to eat because I know it's healthiest for me and my family. So that shift happened and uh, uh, it's been amazing how, uh, you know, as you, your, your bar keeps growing up, you know, moving up as you start, you know, staying in this space because you meet so many people who have such wonderful things to tell you about how good, how good you can be, how, uh, you know, lightly you can live on this planet, not be a burden on this planet. And another thing that I shifted is completely taking plastics off my kitchen. So no food gets stored in plastic in my kitchen. And that's a recent, uh, eight months back, I moved because uh, a lady came from Dehradun and she gave a small presentation in my house for 18 of us. And uh, after she left, I couldn't sleep in the night because she was talking about the toxins from the plastic that enter our food and how we are contaminating, being intellectual, intellectual, uh, you know, human and the species on this planet, we are doing this to ourselves and why, you know, in, 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 that's what when people talk about being safe, how to be, so it's go back to your grandparents and great grandparents period, they lived the way they lived was the safest, you know, it was so wonderful to see that they had nothing waste, they were, everything were, whatever they did was, you know, very sustainable and uh, so I moved from uh, uh, from plastic, that whole, uh, all, all things that were plastic, even Tupperware, I just discarded. So nothing in my fridge also, I don't store any food in, in, in Tupperwares or in, in uh, plastic containers. I had so many takeaway containers, everything I disposed and brought back glass and steel into my kitchen. So you can see all these small shifts happen. And the next thing that I, I really got in touch with was to take off chemicals from my life. You know, uh, we use so many cleaners that are putting heavy chemicals into our drainage systems and into our planet. And so from my home, I decided that I would cut down on chemical cleaners, right from your harpic to your colon to 
uh, you know, your uh, grill and anything and everything that we use in our homes are, uh, you know, toxic. They are chemicals. So uh, I, I started making uh, citrus enzymes. These are enzymes made with uh, just peels of your citrus fruits. It could be musambi, lemon, or anything. And it's very simple. All of you can just remember the proportion that I'll tell you now. It's like if you take uh, the peel, uh, 300 grams of peel. You're not talking about the fruit. You eat the fruit and the peel, 300 grams of the peel, 100 grams of jaggery, one liter of water, and a pinch of uh, uh, yeast. That's all you need to make a bioenzyme. It, it is a citrus enzyme. And it is a natural cleaner, multi-purpose cleaner. Uh, and it, it has, uh, uh, you know, it sanitizes your house. You can mop, you can clean tiles, you can clean your bathrooms. Everything can be clean with it. Uh, you need to put them in a, uh, in a airtight plastic container because uh, it, uh, as it starts to ferment, it's a fermentation method, there's gas that's released. And if you put it in a glass, it will break. So always use a plastic container, 300 grams of uh, citrus peels, 100 grams of jaggery, one liter of water is the proportion. You can increase or decrease accordingly. And uh, in one month's time, if you add a pinch of uh, yeast, in one month's time, you have the enzyme ready. And this enzyme, I, my shampoo is also, a part of my shampoo is also the enzyme. So I have stopped using any uh, shampoo and conditioners. It's more than a year now. I've been introducing it to young, young uh, uh, you know, friends of mine. All of them have taken, it, take, taken to it very, because they all are very conscious of what they're using. And uh, you can see a huge shift happening because we have this uh, natural cleaners as a big campaign in Bangalore going. So you can Google search and uh, check out on uh, uh, people who are doing. And there are people who are selling also. If you have no time to do, best is to do yourself. Uh, if you don't have time to do, you can always buy. And I use uh, uh, soap nut. You all must have heard of the uh, Rita. Uh, that, that liquid along with this, uh, if I want soap in it, like for my shampoo, I'll need with the enzyme, I use that, or shikakai. Uh, it was traditionally used to clean your hair and clean your vessels and all that. So I've gone back to days when, when we, my kitchen, at least my kitchen, uh, should not have chemicals. My maid still uh, tells secretly to my husband to bring prill. Uh, and uh, I, I'm okay with it because the choice is what I made. I mean, the most powerful tool that we have today is the power to choose. And I made the choice not to have but I won't push it on my husband. He still uses Ariel because laundry is his job and I, I don't get into his way. He still uses Ariel and I'm okay with it. I keep telling him, today I made a wash before you got up and I put the liquid cleaner, that what I make. And he'll say, let me smell it. He says, there's no smell. I said, you don't need to have, you know, that he, he uses uh, something for that smell. What is that? Comfort. Yeah, that comfort, yeah. So you, he said, you should be smelling well. I said, yeah, but they are all chemicals. So I subtly tried to you know, influence him. Let him take his time. I am in no hurry. At least 90% uh, of what I am using has shifted, and uh, including my soaps. I, I handmade natural soaps that I use. Um, and uh, uh, I am not alone here. Uh, what really kept me uh, sustained in this space, it's now 11 years, and uh, what really kept me going is the people that you come in contact with. And these are my, the kids from my building, my first champions uh, who, who, who supported me. When I failed for the first time in composting, they were the ones who told me that it doesn't matter, we'll try again. There was something missing. I realized I had not put leaves, dry leaves. It was, I was just collecting my kitchen waste and I put some uh, you know, cow dung into it, thinking that it will turn into something amazing. But then it was a stinking mess. Uh, then I realized that you need a lot of dry leaves, that's the brown part, to hold the moisture balance, and it shouldn't be. And if, if it is so wet and uh, clumpy, then air doesn't pass and it becomes anaerobic. That's why it starts to smell. So understanding composting was only through experimenting and not giving up. So in life, if you have a challenge, you don't give up. You have to move on. You know, it's a hurdle, it's a challenge to you. But then you understand better and you hone the skill because you have cross the first stage where now you, nothing can stop you. So uh, all kinds of, so they were one of my, the first, uh, you know, uh, uh, people that uh, we worked closely. I would put them all into my car and we would drive everywhere. We would do kind of, uh, you know, uh, campaigns where people would call us, they would do a small skit and uh, they would talk, they would do a, I never did a PPT in my life. I, I didn't know how to operate even a laptop. So they, they did a PowerPoint and they would show it to residents and 
you know, make it very fun activity. And I really enjoyed my time with these kids because they were so, uh, they, they, in fact, they were wondering why people don't understand as things as simple as segregation. You know, we would go to house to house to talk about segregation. People would say, no, no, you come later, go talk to the secretary. You know, they would push them off. And as young kids, they were saying, uh, uh, you know, I think we should write a bestseller. I said, what do you, what do you mean? You know, a bestseller saying 100 things, 100 reasons people give for not segregating. You know, so because they were getting, and actually they started listing out the reasons people gave for not even listening to them, you know. Uh, or giving them a, you know, uh, uh, an audience to tell them what, what, what is important, why you should segregate, why is recycling so important. So I learned a lot being with these kids. And uh, then next came the Malaysian team. So from my building, you can see I moved to the, uh, you know, the area. So I found that uh, people, uh, we, we so organically came together. We never knew each other before we came together. Yeah? And uh, that's uh, Claire. She was French. Uh, she, I had put in small box outside my uh, apartment and wrote e-waste so that people would come and drop off e-waste in that. So I had hung a CD and I had stuck a you know, battery uh, on that on a tree. It was a box. It was a cardboard box. And I wrote e-waste. So she, when she was passing by, she saw that and she asked, who has done this? And she came up to my apartment and she, uh, she asked me, would you teach me composting? Because she heard that I compost too. So that... So you can see, we became such a strong team, and we did funky things together. The best thing is, we were very uh, visual. Uh, we all had aprons, can you see? And uh, each apron had one part of the waste that we were throwing away, and which was valuable. So she had all paper. Uh, Claire had all e-waste. She has a huge CD on hers and a bulb there, you know, on the hat. So it was a very uh, a vibrant and colorful kind of, uh, you know, campaign. And we would go everywhere. In Malaysia, we would park ourselves uh, at road corners, put up a big banner called We, we Care for Malaysia. And then, you know, we start talking about We had a table where we displayed all different kinds of ways, what were recyclable, what were non-recyclable, what you can avoid completely, and, you know, and composting. So we would keep the vegetable peel and actually tell it turns into this. And people ask, how? And we'll explain how we did. So we would take our, you know, earthworms and show they are amazing you know, uh, champions of this. So they eat up all your, you know, food waste and they convert something called the castings, which is so good for your soil. So we would campaign in such, we would go for, you know, walks and you can see things before you throw and all sorts of fun things we were done. And uh, it's been, a, a, you know, great to have this team. The next team that ha was, was a larger Bangalore team. Uh, we, we, we started doing workshops. So we would announce, because we, I was doing a lot on social media, like Facebook and, you know, uh, those days Facebook was very huge. Now Instagram and other stuff is there. But uh, I, would, I would record every campaign with pictures. So picture stories were there. My albums are plenty of albums. If you go back, you know, 10 years of albums that we have put up, every campaign ours would go up. And then we started announcing for uh, workshops. On my terrace, we started doing uh, waste management and gardening workshops. And people would come, and they wouldn't want to leave. Six o'clock, we would say four o'clock, nine to four. Till six, people are asking questions. They want to learn more. So it was very exciting to have these people on my terrace. And so much of positive uh, you know, uh, vibes when, when you have people who want to learn. You know, we were not teaching them anything. It was we are sharing what we learned from our own experiences. And this was great fun. We were all wearing Tula clothes. Slowly, we started looking at how clothing, you know, uh, organic clothing and, you know, helping the sector which was really suffering. So uh, we all started advertising for Tula. Tula was the organic cotton. That was one more thing. And that's Dr. Vishwanath in the center. Uh, he's the one who encouraged uh, the, uh, even today we have a, a event, a flagship event called Uta from your Tota. How many of you heard of Uta from your Tota? Okay. Uh, it is, uh, Uta is food. Tota is your garden. So it's urban farmers congregation. So we have this once in three, four months. Uh, this time in uh, uh, Jainagar we have, uh, where uh, there will be a lot of stalls which will have products, you know, uh, for gardening. And a uh, lot of seeds will be sold. There will be gardening workshops happening. There will be a uh, workshop for young children called the Chinari Kai Tota. And uh, lots of, uh, it's a whole day event, sometimes even two-day event. And uh, I'm explaining to Anand Kumar uh, about, that's a tray of vegetable peel. 
and uh, I never consider uh, what uh, what we collect from the waste from my from my kitchen as waste at all because it's great resource which converts so it's always displayed well it's you know a lot of uh, we never consider I'll touch waste and a show and because it's something that I have eaten it's not garbage I, it becomes garbage only when you throw it out of your home so that's the kind of passion that you get or connect connectedness you get and then this SWMRT is the big uh, you know, Pan Bangalore team, uh, fantastic champions. So each have a core core strength, and they work on it. There are people who work with the policy, you know, influencing policies. There are people at the in the expert committee, and uh, I as a you know awareness. I don't do anything other than you know going and talking to people, doing demonstrations, doing workshops. This is my forte, and I continue doing that. And you have Dr. Meenakshi, who is like a Amazing champion, especially green to red now. She being a doctor, gynecologist, she has taken that all India. And uh, so a lot of people like that, you can see Dr. Mr. Ramakant, he's like the, we call him the Hasiru Anna, because uh, he's 80 plus, and the kind of work he has, the com commitment and the work he does, he crisscrosses across Bangalore, and uh, he's there everywhere, you know, trying to, you know, talk and uh, work with the municipality, work with the commissioners, to make sure that Bangalore becomes a waste sensitive city, who looks at waste, decentralize the entire stuff. So we have come across a lot of issues on the way. There is mafias that go, keep going. They don't want you to segregate. They, they don't want you to have it a decentralized management. They want it centralized so that you know the, the budget for waste in Bangalore, the chunk of the budget goes to uh, transportation. So the transport mafia does not want you to segregate and you know, use up your drive, uh, wet waste and send your driveways to the driveways collection center. They don't want to do that. They want you to mix and give so that they can transport it out of the city and dump because that's where they earn their, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, so that, that, that's something like that. So Swachagraha has been a very, very active campaign for us. Uh, once the court mandated segregation, that is two bin, one bag was the color coded uniform system across Bangalore city where you were supposed to uh, put all your waste in to diff three different categories. One is the green bin, which had uh, all your wet waste. It's all your organic waste from your kitchen. Then the red bin for all the rejects. And then there's the bag where you collect all your recyclables. It's every bit of paper, plastic, metal, glass gets collected there. And uh, this system uh, should have aligned with a, with a system by the municipality, which would pick up in the same stream, the waste streams. But it, it is not everywhere that it's successful because it takes a long time for them to change the systems. They're still having, they're having a lot of issues uh, with the collection itself. So we believe segregation at source is the most important thing. Whether your collection is getting done or they're getting mixed after that, every citizen shouldn't worry about it. Uh, the good practice is that you continue to keep them separate because 90% uh, of what you're throwing away, if it is mixed, you have lost resources. Because when you mix paper, you know, bit of paper with your kitchen waste, it gets lost. But that paper can go for recycling. So segregation is the most sustainable way to manage waste, and you get fantastic resource recovery. You can, because India is a very vibrant uh, recycling industry we have. We have huge number of people who are in the recycling industry, and that encourages them to be. So Swachagraha campaign was the next one, where we said create three green spots. The first green spot is uh, composting. The second green spot is to grow your own vegetables in whatever space that you have. And the th th third green spot is about eating safe food. That, that was the uh, Swachagra campaign. Uh, we gave them kits uh, for people, uh, very low cost kits where they could compost without any problem. And I also made a one week challenge. Uh, this challenge, uh, it, you all must have heard of the ice bucket challenge, people putting ice on them, just absolutely unproductive. You know, they had nothing uh, gaining out of it. It just went viral. So we thought, why not have a challenge to the city of Bangalore? Tell them, for one week, don't throw your wet waste out. But this is the kit, and you, you, you compost it at home. See how it works. Whether you have issues, whether you are time. Because many people give a lot of excuse. Time is a constraint, place is a constraint. I don't have space, and I don't have you know, uh, energy. So, so many things are there. Maybe it, 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 it will smell. There will be a lot of creepy crawlies. There will be a lot of flies around. So all kinds of uh, issues around composting. So this challenge helped people to experiment for a week, and then they could decide whether they want to continue or not.
So that, that became a fantastic way to convert people and to start composting at home uh, because that's the smallest portion of waste is what you generate, right? Even it aggregates, it's like 5,000 tons per day. Bangalore generates 5,000 tons every day and you can, if, if it is in a mixed form, you don't even know where it's going. It may be in your drains, it may be causing all flooding, it could be in uh, rivers, it could be in oceans, it could be in lakes, it could be in the land, landfill. So you don't know, once it leaves your home, you don't know where it's going to reach. But since you're the generator, you're still responsible for it. So our whole campaign hashtag has been, you know, my waste is my responsibility. So nan kasa nan jawabdari. That, that became our, uh, you know, uh, a catch word. And uh, uh, so uh, as I told you that re reduction is one of the ways. So even big events, we asked people to start reducing. So rent a cutlery was again something that we were pushing. So Adhimya Chetna uh, was one of the organizations that uh, they, they had uh, uh, steel plates, steel tumblers, and uh, everything steel. Uh, they, could, they would give it to you for your big weddings and all that, and they wouldn't charge you anything. Uh, they would, once you take back, they'll give you the deposit. So that, that's how they started. Once they started, we on our part thought, again, we'll decentralize that. So in each, you know, uh, areas we should have people who have a small set for small functions, birthday parties, maybe you have a puja at home, so that people don't use disposables. Like, so easy to use a paper cup, so easy to use something that you can use and throw. So we encourage people asking them to rent out. So even I have a set of, you know, 50, 50 plates, 50 cups, 50 tumblers, katoris, spoons, coffee cups, you know, so that I can give my relatives, my friends, whoever have a, a small function at home. So that's again, uh, we started increasing. Of course, as, uh, as we started campaigning, as this movement grew, uh, uh, there was a lot of press coverage. Uh, I had two YouTube videos which, which really had a fantastic uh, viewership. Uh, it was like five lakhs and above, and uh, it, it was how to compost. So people have been Google searching about composting, and they find my videos. They start composting, and I, I meet people whom I have never seen before will come up to me and say, I started composting because of that video. So you can see the power of the social media. Uh, it works wonders when you, when you are passionately involved in something that you want to you know, change. You want your city to uh, understand that it, it lies in your home and your hands, that you can make a difference. And uh, the, uh, of course, we, I had a web. Uh, I never thought that I'll be on Satyameva. They just came and asked about Bangalore's waste. And I talked and talked and talked, and it went on to the, as their you know, web exclusive. So, uh, as the green ambassador. And uh, of course, awards followed soon. Uh, it only uh, made my resolve even stronger uh, because, uh, again, your responsibility is more because people are recognizing that you have something that you can spread around and you have something that you can talk about. And uh, I also landed up in a small movie. I've done some advertisements. So uh, a person who never left home, you know, for her to come and talk to groups of people, I was so conscious of myself, I wouldn't talk to even two people, you know. And today I'm able to drive myself, go around the city, talk to groups of people, and also uh, end up doing some advertisements and then this little movie, very, very, uh, it hasn't been released, but uh, a lot of, uh, you know, there is uh, a strong message coming out of a movie called Vriksha. It's about environment. It's a short film. Uh, hopefully it will come out and uh, we all get to see it. Uh, so. This is the opportunities that I got, and uh, it, it's been an amazing journey. And um, uh, I think uh, ultimately, uh, if you connect to something very strongly, uh, I think you have the capacity to make a huge difference in that field. And I have, uh, uh, I have in my journey felt that, and it's the strongest feeling that I have today is I can make a difference, and I'm proud of it. There should be pride. Uh, so even we call ourselves trash talkers. Yeah, kasa. We're talking about kasa all the time, and I'm very proud to talk about it. And uh, it, it has influenced uh, not just my family, it has influenced everything around me. So today, the kind of friends I have, the kind of energy that is around me is amazing. That keeps me really, you know, happy and joyful. And there's something that I can do every day to make a difference. Yeah, and composting is one action that you can take every day to make a difference. Don't wait for an environment day or an earth day to say that I will do something, but on a daily basis you can make a difference. 
by just you know starting to compost in your home. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I can take questions. Yeah, uh, if we have room, yeah, already we have a question there. Here you go. Uh, good evening. My question is that we have this two bins bag system in our apartment. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that in spite of telling the BBMP people to pick it up, they will mix it. Right. And we can keep telling them, but they'll keep mixing it. Yeah. So the segregation is happening in the house. There are some people who are doing the composting as well. Yeah. But you can see that th the lady who comes and the van who comes, and when you stop him and tell him, he'll say, ah, this part is wet and this part is dry, but yeah. it doesn't really happen. Yeah. So how do you educate? How many apartments do you have in your? 11. 11, yeah, it's a small, yeah. Uh, so for bulk generators, it is mandated that they compost within their premises. Uh, that is, if they are generating 100 kgs and above, yours is a very small apartment. Uh, so ultimately, uh, you know, we have to wait for systems to align with what we are doing. It's not happening now. Right now, it's not happening. So uh, while we're waiting, the frustration happens and people stop, stop segregating itself. Yeah. So m most of the people in Bangalore have gone back to times when they were mixing everything and giving. Because even if I segregate, they are mixing up. That's been the biggest complaint. And how do you get that going? It is about citizens participating. It is about citizens getting the you know, uh, BBMP to do it. Because there are mafias that are ruling in our city, which don't want you to segregate. Even if you segregate, because they get, as I told you, that uh, mixed waste uh, and transportation is what they're looking at, because they can cart it away. Uh, so uh, there is a, a citizen group in HSR, which are doing an amazing work. There's no discharge from their ward at all. They have ward level, they're able to compost, they're able to segregate everything, because there's a, there's a set of citizens who have volunteered to become a force behind the whole campaign. So they are pushing, they are there everywhere. They make sure that uh, whatever is the law is abided. They go home, house to house, along with the power karmikas, so that they see that if anybody's mixing, they tell them off right there. So, it, so it's somewhere we need to, it'll take time. I mean, the thing is, you have to do what your bit. Your bit is to segregate. If you possible, go and drop it off into the dry waste collection center. Every ward has one. Here, Domlur, you have a dry waste collection center. So on your part, maybe you can collect it for a week and go and drop it off somewhere so that you take responsibility of waste. The minute you depend on the outside, you know, uh, you never know whether it's happening. So they even burn waste. So you never know that if you have handed it over, your waste con has got burnt. You know, many people have this habit of burning waste so that they re reduce the quantity of waste. So, yeah, we are still struggling with that. Uh, we, we need robust systems. That's not happening yet. Yeah, I have, I have one question regarding the landfills. Every now and then I hear from the uh, newspapers and all that we identified a new place for landfill and all. I've even read about the disadvantages that you mentioned in the past. If it is so dangerous for environment, why can't we fight with the government to stop this landfill process and go to a new one? Yeah, actually they've closed down the landfills, okay. uh, but they're looking at more places to dump. So they've taken quarries, they're dumping in quarries, and uh, they're trying to get more uh, uh, you know, outside the city limit. But that's again, they're looking at aggregating cities' waste to take it. So if, if, if we really have to say no to a landfill, we need to really create systems which will decentralize the whole thing. So at your ward levels, you need composting, and you need, you need proper segregation happening all over the city. As long as it starts, because there's so much of construction waste, even that gets dumped somewhere or the other. So waste is a humongous problem. And we, 11 years in this, we haven't scratched the surface. We always say we dived into the waste. We are still somewhere at the bottom. I have, we have to surface to actually see a change. We haven't. We are still in that stink, you know. We are still low down trying to make changes. So it's going to happen if everybody participates. We need people to participate because unless you're aware and sensitized about what your waste does to the environment and how it's coming back to you in some form or the other, if you're not sensitive to it, we will not make changes at our home. Because many people say, they have this feeling that if one person changes, how is it going to make a big difference? My whole neighborhood is throwing them as mixed. If I change, what difference? I believe what I do is most important to me. And I am I'm sure I'm making a huge difference. That was my first 
feeling. And I know as time goes that you, you will start influencing everybody around you because of your conviction there. You need not, people say, how do you tell people? How do you tell them to change? No, it's the conviction in which you talk because you believe so strongly in it. Does the government say the, uh, do the same thing that for the West West, what you are practicing, like making it compost? And yeah, yeah, there are, they have compost. See, there are a lot of problems, issues around it, you know. So uh, at, at the state, at the, I mean, the city level, there are some composting units. They break down, they, they, they start stinking, neighbors don't want it around. So, you know, there, we have issues. Composting is not, it's a biodegradable stuff. If it's not done the right way, if there's no enough aeration, it starts to stink. So the processes have to be more robust. You know, they should have, so they look at now technology. They'll say, let's bring incinerators. That's the, like, the complete uh, solution to waste. No, incinerators all over the world has failed. It's not the solution for this. So they, they wouldn't put a proper enforcement. If, if we had proper enforcement, by now Bangalore would have, everybody would have segregated, you know, and we would be diverting it away. Every stream would have been shifted. You know, they would have been gone for recycling. But it, it so happens that there is hardly any enforcement. And that's where we, the system is failing. And they're looking at Crow's project where, you know, some kickback will happen with, for the, you know, some ministers. And they'll put these huge incinerators. And you don't even know, you know, and wet waste can never go to this incinerator. should not go. Anything that is biodegradable should not go there. It's only for uh, reject waste incinerators. But it's such big feeders. They will take even your wet waste. Just imagine the kind of energy it has to use to dry it up and then burn it. Yeah? You keep a, a glass of water on the stove. How long it takes to dry up that water, for the water to completely evaporate? How much of gas you've used? So an incinerator has to dry your waste before it burns. So it makes really no sense to have such huge projects coming up. And they, they love that. You know, the government loves to have something, one solution, let's put it, and least interested in whether it is polluting your environment, what does the future look like? It is, so we are caught there, you know. It takes long time. Yeah, uh, basically now the trend of being like, uh, taking everything to organic, uh, eliminating plastic out of your lives, it's all gonna cost you so much, I mean. You are going to pay a price. So how do we consider that? And is there a way like uh, we can do a budgeting around it? OK. Uh, so uh, what, what for me, I can only tell what, how it helped me to shift. So I, like you, I also had wondered whether I can be completely organic at home. Can I have a food? Because organic is a very a new term. It looks like more organic store, organic products, because they are all highly priced, right? So people are wondering whether they can really shift. But how I looked at it is, uh, it has to be safe for me. And uh, I'll be anyway spending money on, on the doctors and the treatments when you are taking so much toxins in your body. We'll end up, there are, there are studies saying that my friend, close friend Maitri, she's an oncologist working with cancer. And in her talks, she only talks about read labels. And, and then go back and search what that, you know, what that chemical is doing to you. You know, you search for it and it will end you up. It is toxin. So you, it shouldn't be in your food. So why, when we understand that food is today largely grown with, you know, a lot of uh, chemicals, fertilizers, a lot of pesticides because they have moved away from our agriculture which was so naturally, you know, they had an agriculturalist who had uh, multiple crops. He, he knew, he had, the, you know, his ancestors growing the same way. He had that knowledge coming down to him and he knew what it was. And he grew it the most natural way, with his, uh, with his field full of life, and food was growing. And he never threw any pesticides around. You know, Today, there's so much of pesticides. So you should now, instead of asking, why is that so expensive, you should ask, why is the other food so cheap? Only that shifted me. What shifted for me, that I seek that where I can I buy something that's safe for my family, is only because I asked that question to myself. If this is expensive, why is the other food so cheap? Is it really worth putting in your mouth? So today, we, we love to have a great lifestyle. We love to buy good houses, nice cars, the latest mobiles. But when it comes to food, why do we look at a cheap food to put in our mouth? So that's something that you need to really dwell in and think, can that shift happen? Will I put 
uh, the cost as the criteria, right? So you start sourcing from farmers and increase those farmers, right? I wouldn't buy from 24-hour mansa. It's a profit-making company. I wouldn't touch anything that is uh, a corporate. But I would love to go and find where are the farmers. There are so many people online who sell. Again, people ask me, how do you know it's organic? What if it's... So questions keep coming. There's something called trust. So I would trust. So, so the thing is, we, we, there'll be a lot of things that will come in your mind. You really know, don't know whether it, it'll be an expense for you or it's a lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. Probably you would be spending more on your medical bills where if, you, if you continue like this. So as I told my friend, she said, uh, next few years, uh, the biggest thing that uh, every hospital would be dealing with is cancer. As it is, you've seen, every family, everybody has got cancer now. So that's only because of the kind of toxins that we're taking. So food, especially when you grow your own food, that's why I say compost, grow your own food, then you see the value of a safe food, a tasty, naturally tasting food. You know? And that, that really changes the way you live. Uh, yeah, I, I will uh, let you know. No, I haven't been doing workshops. My dad was sick. I'm a caregiver. He was sick. He passed away. So I stopped for some time. I had my mother-in-law who was sick. I loved being a caregiver. And I put my 100% in that. So, and my father fell sick and he died. So it was more... Uh, so I stopped my workshops for some time. Uh, I should get back. Uh, people are asking me to come back to workshops. Yeah, I will do it. Just one small question. Um, the discarded oil, uh, how do you dispose that? Oh, that's a tricky one because uh, there are people who will come and pick it up. Uh, Hasirudala especially, they, they come and pick up. If you have enough oil that you're not using, you, I mean, oil reheating is again not good. So we have a lot of oil to give away. Mm, they, if you collect it, they come and uh, take it. I think they use... Yeah? Yeah, but some people don't. If you have used for, you know, food and all that, they may not. Yeah, you can use for lighting. Yeah, yeah. All that can be done. Yeah, yeah. Oil, but oil uh, uh, is not good in a compost. Uh, it will uh, slow down and uh, it, it's not. So anything that comes, uh, uh, I mean, oil content or dairy, like cheese and all, we don't put in the compost. It really uh, changes the uh, way the process goes. So it could, it could hurt the process itself. So we don't put oil in the, the too, so much of oil. So if it is a little bit, you can uh, take it in a cloth or something and put it in your compost, it will break down. But if you have a large amount of oil, it's best just to give people who can re recycle it. They use it in different purposes. You know, Some industries will be using it. Uh, Hasirudala, you can Google search. Hasiru, Hasirudala. Huh, you can check with them if they... Uh, yeah, you can check with them. Yeah. Yeah, they threaten them and, uh, you know, all sorts of problems. I mean... Okay. Mm. I mean, we have a lot of challenges. Everybody, even apartments which are doing it 100%, they still have problems because there'll be a new tenant who'll come and again mix it up. And, you know, so your housekeeping is constantly, you have to be alert and, you know, they should be well trained to have a, you know, zero uh, tolerance to anybody who mixes. So, so what you do to be the best of the Yes, exactly. You have to have a zero tol tolerance for mixture. That works in many apartments, and also it's like if if the if the team which is in charge go along with them, people will not uh, you know because they can easily tell these guys, "I'll pay you some money, you you segregate it." No, it's not the housekeeping's responsibility. It is your responsibility to keep it segregated. Any other? Yeah. Uh, no. I have one question and one idea to share. Okay. Uh, so my question is, uh, we all live in a very limited space in the apartments, in the flats. Is it possible for us to grow uh, vegetables that can sustain a family of four to five people uh, at home? 
in no, a balcony? Maybe. Yeah, small terrace? space balcony. Yes, it's balcony. We don't have access to terrace and all. Uh, it depends on how much, how many pots you can eat. It won't sustain you, all your needs, but uh, definitely it will give you the pleasure of, you know, picking your own vegetables from your garden. Yeah, and also for the younger generation, you have something that, you know, if you're nurturing something, they, they understand. They, it takes them off from the gadgets they are so, you know, addicted to. So you give them the responsibility of nurturing a plant. They would water it, wait for it, the flowering, and then they learn about where the tomato comes, where the potato comes from, not from the refrigerator or from the supermarket. So at least, you know, some kind of uh, introduction to nature in your little balcony where they learn a lot of lessons. Yeah. So I don't think anybody can uh, sustain uh, growing in an urban scenario. I, I have friends who have small spaces, but they are so amazingly, um, uh, you know, structured that she grows most of her vegetables on her terrace. She doesn't buy from outside in Rajajinagar. Amazing, you know, the way she plants. So it needs a lot of commitment and, you know, you need to take care so that, you know, there are no pest problems, make sure the soil is healthy. So it's a completely a different uh, education that you go through. And this doesn't, it doesn't give you in any university or anything. It's about learning through experience. You fail somewhere, then that's where you learn. And uh, uh, we have a huge Facebook group called the Organic Terrace Gardening Group, which is like a university by itself. The minute you post a picture saying that this leaf has gone yellow, why? They will tell you why. There will be 10 people who will immediately answer. So they say, this pest is on this plant. What do I do? So they, they will give you immediate suggestions. So it's like learning with people's experience. So that's how we all learned. And uh, it, 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 you create your own little heaven there. Yeah, the idea that I would like to share is last year, a few of uh, our kids in the apartment just came up with the idea saying that, Auntie, why not we have a complete eco-friendly Ganesha? So we just brainstormed and we got up with few ideas and that really worked well. Since we have uh, Ganpati coming up uh, 2nd September, I would like to share these ideas. Uh, with a limited budget of 2,000 for it in a, uh, flats or four, 400 flats in our apartment, uh, we, we get just the... Uh, uh, mud ganpati and there is no decoration material there is no flowers no leaves no that paint. we bring and uh, we ask the residents to get whatever decorative items that they have and put up on the uh, in the hall in the community there they did that and second we do not serve prasadas in these uh, plastic and all they all get their uh, cutlery and all yeah. so that way we found that you know our uh, festival was completely eco-friendly fantastic fantastic yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't take much to plan like that. It just needs that understanding that people are not even aware that they're generating waste. And moreover, uh, the apartment where I live has been uh, in highlights because, you know, uh, uh, we have a committee who is very passionate in saving water. Mm. So what they have done is the STPI, everything is in place, and they have installed uh, individual meters to monitor the uh, water, consumption. water consumption. And uh, mm. I think every everywhere apartment we are should in have the, that. No, we are an example in the entire wide Which field. Which one is this? The Greens apartment. Okay. You can Google it, ma'am. You will find it out. Mm. And, uh, you know, we have 40, 50 apartment people coming up. And, you Super. know, our okay. plumber has really become a uh, consultant now. Right. So it's That's nice so that we do That's these so little things, yes. There's so much to learn, so much to do. I mean, I think it's never ending. I mean, till, mm -hmm. till I die, I think I learn, continue learning. So it's like, uh, yeah. Ma'am, one last question. Uh, is there any alternative for uh, the plastic containers, the packages and all? Like, I, I am also passionate in uh, making hair mask. I blend my own hair mask and I give it away. So I'm looking out for some uh, alternative for those plastic containers that you get, no? Mm. 400 ml. Do we have any alternative Glass for those? Glass only is the alternative. Glass. Yeah, Glass containers. Uh, okay. That, that, that can replace that. But don't it go is, for this uh, it is biodegradable viable, stuff and all. Because that's, again, you don't know. They use a lot of... Uh, vegetable starch to make, you know, biodegradable bags and all. Again, you know, best is to carry your own bags to buy stuff and, you know, package things in that. And there is a still a huge market, the swiggies and all bring hot liquids and hot stuff in the plastic containers. And it's so harmful because by the time it reaches you, so much of it, the chemicals would have leached into that. So, uh, so a best is to go to uh, take your own dabas and go and buy and come. You know, best is take a walk down to whichever, you know, it makes you also move a little, not sit at home and order Swiggy. Uh, so it's like go down to the bakery, you know, uh, buy whatever you want. Go to the restaurant there, take your dabbas, get your idli and sambar from them. 
I mean, I remember when I came newly to my in-laws place, every Sunday was my father-in-law would take that uh, can for sambar and one, one box for idlis. He would go and bring, and chutney one, one, one steamed dabba. So we should go back to days. Which one? Milk. Move to glass. There are so many people who are giving in glass. I am subscribing to a Farm Fresh. They give you the bottle, like before. So it's uh, Akshay Kalpa also gives, but they don't take back the bottle. That's again not sustainable. You have to take back the bottle and bring it back again. So we leave a bottle in the night. Morning, he takes a bottle and replaces with a glass, uh, with a milk in the glass. Yeah. Hello, to time that out. Uh, we'll take one last question. You can always interact after the event too. Yeah, hello. Good evening to ma'am. This is Prabhupada here. Let me accept here that you are so beautiful. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and Thank you so much. And, and not only is it beautiful, your thoughts, your works are actually making you, you know, keep on young and beautiful. God bless you. And you. <laughs> there's no questions because I have seen, you know, many questions and probably you are answering many questions. So I, I would like to thanks to my marketing team, Deepa and Swami sir for, you know, bringing and being here. I'm, I'm really happy and I would like to request if you could have, oh, Bisal, oh, I'm so sorry, Bisal, yes. thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Deepa, to, you know, tell. So I, if there is any training program, like, you know, gardening, how to do composting, so please, if you could have come to Saskin or Saskin could have uh, taken survey and give, so personally, I would like to go through that training program. That is the only one. And really keep doing good. Thank you so much thank for you. your thank time you. and standing here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think we uh, have to conclude this with one round of standing ovation for Oh, that's Mali. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. While you sit down, I think there are a couple of uh, takeaways for all of us. I think even if we just get the one takeaway, just examine her bag and the little slide she showed what she carries, right? That should be yeah. a very great start. Yes, yes. If I we can stop <laughs> carrying around. I think her bag is there for scrutiny. It's not People an advertisement. Asked, uh, why you, it's a burden to carry. I said I'd rather carry this burden than burden my you know, planet with all the stuff that I could have created. Just a second. Yeah, I always carry my much, water uh, and refill it wherever I go. I think she, she would be happy to know that in, in Saskin we have done away with plastic. We have distributed one metal water bottle to oh, everybody. Super, super. Yeah. 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 All of you branded. have. That's fantastic. Yeah. The because other thing again, that we have banned is even our water is stored in metal containers. Okay. We have got metal containers manufactured so that our uh, treated water is given to all things in metal canisters. Fantastic. Of course, huh? cutting pani. Yeah. So this is uh, a lot of things that we have done. I think uh, if we follow this inspiration, start at home, don't worry about uh, major global changes that will yeah. happen. And so the tenacity. I also liked one thing. I have told her about the Dome Blue Compost yes. Unit. I mean, you guys are doing amazing yeah. job. Tenacity, if you want, one major lesson I take, took away from her is even to convert your spouse to your way of thinking takes time. <laughs> Forget the world. <laughs> so you have to be patient. I think that is the virtue, right? So aerial dust creep in, you know, <laughs> we have to figure a way to remove that too. That's the tenacity. When I told her that Sassians will be characteristically 10 minutes late, she said, I've got enormous patience because I've just dived into this garbage <laughs> and we will, we will figure out. So once again with a round of applause and let Thank me also you. invite so, uh, Anis. I, I carry uh, my Why don't you come? Cups. Cup. So I have a stackable cup bag which, which always goes. So even in weddings, I pull out my stuff. I say no to anything that is, you know, comes in a disposable. So I carry a, a, a plate. Uh, people ask, how do you wash it? I said, no, I just wrap it in, in this cloth. So I have a steel plate. Which I, it's always there in my bag. So I don't want to be caught. Uh, you know, I'm hungry and I have to eat in a disposable plate. So it's always there. Uh, this is an old curtain which turns into a napkin, which is, which is there. So all this go back to regular washing. And also uh, uh, there is a pouch in which I have a steel uh, spoon. There is a, a steel straw. <laughs> Uh, you know, a straw which has, uh, it can wash. Though I don't use, I, I love drinking the coconut water as is. I don't have to use it. But still, if there is some kid with me or somebody who needs it, who has a lipstick and don't want to, you know, spoil it. <laughs> so I give them this. 
So uh, small, small things, you know, these small things make a big difference to me. You get it online? Yeah, you get Steel Straw online. Nothing you can't get online. Okay, let me request Sakshi to come and give a little memento. Nice things to learn from you. Please give a memento of appreciation. And by the way, I hope you guys remember one thing, that we have an eco-friendly Ganesha making workshop here. Oh, that's Round of applause, please. And one more request. Uh, uh, no more of that. Yes. Uh, you know, when I do a demo, I have, I, I have a trolley that I carry everywhere. So I call it my Mera Jeevan Sati. Because that trolley goes everywhere I go. And in that, I have my entire demo kit, right? From composting no to plastic. anything that is, uh, you know, that goes everywhere. Because I love doing a workshop with properly demo. So I always carry this paper and tell people, uh, even if you wrap in a newspaper, you shouldn't worry about what people think. Because this is a non-recyclable paper. It's just, you know, unless you know, you don't. And this is neither the plastic industry nor, it, it's got a coated metal. So it, you may open it neatly and save it so that you can pack it. But ultimately, it becomes waste which can't be recycled. So we should avoid this. I, I told about uh, uh, the flower for him. I said, don't give me a bouquet. I don't accept bouquets. Uh, but I forgot about uh, this. <laughs> Fasgare Obama. <laughs> and I'm sure now that you know. We will remove yes, it immediately. Just put a news, a newspaper. So we have a paper wrap. We'll use a yeah, paper wrap. A good wrap, you know, which yeah. can go for recycling. So some of you want to continue to ask questions. Maybe a few more minutes you can do that. After this, we formally close this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swami. Thank you very much.